<laughs> Viva La Vegan! Hi, I'm Lee Chantel from VivaLaVegan.net and today I have a guest, his name is Michael Landfield and he's an author, he's a vegan educator and he's a filmmaker from Montreal in Canada. Welcome Michael, how are you? Excellent, thank you for having me on. No problem. And um, you can get Michael on his website with his name, michaellandfield.com and it's about 9 p.m. Thursday in Canada. Mm -hmm. It's about just a bit before um, 11 a.m. here on Friday. Wow. How are you feeling? I'm feeling excellent. Just a little tired because it's my, you know, I, I, I try to go to bed early yeah. every day. So how was your day? What did you do today? Anything exciting? Uh, like all, always promoting the vegan message as much as possible. Uh, doing all that I can. I mean, my websites, uh, through Facebook, I mean, just a lot. Uh, my book is coming out shortly as well. So mm -hmm. that's uh, another thing that I've been working on very hard for the past five years now. Cool. Um, so it's been really, actually four years, sorry. I, be, I did it since I started uh, August 2010. Mm -hmm. And... It's come to this point, and I've started last year. I've started uh, under the same title as the book, a film, mm -hmm. and, and it's yeah, based. Well, we can talk about that now. Then, so you're working on a book, and you're working on a film, and it's called the interconnectedness of life. And you've based this on Will Tuttle's World Peace Diet. So, right. can you tell me what, why, what inspired this? Uh what inspired it? Um, well, the book I started a while back in 2010, and really it was to tell my story of awakening, how I awakened to being vegan. And I mean, I was getting so many questions and comments from people, and every time just saying the same thing over mm. and over and over, and I thought, okay, here's a book, and <laughs> just read it, and that's it. <laughs> and I thought, you know, in a you know, a couple of short minutes I have to speak with this person. I don't, it's not enough time to say what I have to say. And so I thought a book would be good. And I actually was in high school. I was really bad in English. And I'm still an atrocious speller, but mm -hmm. I have written this book and, uh, of course, professionally edited and so forth. And I am, it is coming out. Um, early next year, probably January or February of next year, and um, it's going to be a free PDF and also uh, shortly thereafter a uh, paperback copy. So that will be in store. And the film for the film, I actually after I after I um, took and completed the World Peace Dive Facilitator Training Program the one that Dr. Will Tuttle offers, I actually wanted to base the film on uh, the book, The World Peace Diet. And so it, like probably three quarters of the film is based on the book. Part of it is based on my life story. Mm -hmm. And then there are going to be, of course, other people that will be on the film as well. So. so who have you got involved with the film? Will Tuttle, obviously? Um, right now, uh, all I have is Will Tuttle. I have a few others um, for the film. Um, but I'm going to be doing a lot of filming like starting next year. So really, it's kind of on the, on the beginning stages. Oh, okay. so, I started so I started last year to film. So it's really just a, a baby, basically. Mm. So you, the the books at the end stage is ready to be released, but the film is still at the like you know beginning sort of stages. Right. Okay. Right. So what sort of people are you looking for? Can we give a shout out to anyone that you need for the video? Lee Chappelle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more than happy. <laughs> um. People want, I guess, from my point of view, if I was watching a film, I would want to see people uh, that have a telling story to, to talk about, um, their journey. Mm -hmm. uh, people that, for example, maybe a slaughterhouse worker that went vegan or uh, 
that became vegan or um, so forth. Um, probably looking to interview maybe Harold Brown, maybe Howard Lyman. I'm not uh, entirely sure, but I will be uh, going f uh, from time to time to the U.S. to actually doing, uh, be doing some filming over there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've done already some filming, but uh, just a small part cool. for the for the film. But a lot of it is going to be like licensed material because I just can't film certain things, yeah. and I just don't have the capability. I'm not that uh, good of a filmmaker. I'm really this is my like first big project that I'm take I'm taking on. And a funny thing is that I want to talk about this for a couple of minutes because. Uh, I don't want to ramble on. I, I love, love to ramble on. <laughs> so um, in, I think it was March of 2013 or May, well, one of those months, uh, my uncle actually told me about this small little camera and he's like, well, this, uh, this function, this function, this function. And I'm like, yeah, this would be good for like, I've always wanted to create some sort of documentary film after watching BBC Earth's uh, series and shark water I just found that I was so intrigued by the underwater and all those uh, cool. uh, African safari um, um, like lions and all that I, I just was so fascinated by the wild animal kingdom mm. at the time and that was probably like 10 years or so ago and then I just just decided to get this camera. It was really like portable. I didn't want to get a huge, big mm. professional cameras because then how I'm gonna put it in my bag, you know, yeah. and carry it around with me. So I, I got that. It has like uh, high definition capabilities and all of that. It's also it's basically a photo camera that has uh, additional video features. And so I just started uh, last year, and it's been going slowly, slowly. But um, that's what I've been doing. Cool. That's good. This past this past uh, year, or so. Good. And so, um, when you wanted to create um, the book and the and the video, like you've said, why you wanted to create the book? Why did you think um, the video would relate? Like, do you want it to relate to your book, or is it completely um, separate? They just share the same title. Or? They share the they share the same title, but basically, um, they're a little different. Uh, I mean, the the book has my story in there, and the film will have my story as well. How I went vegan. Um, but it is a little different because I started the book a while back, so it doesn't have. I mean, if I if I written the book now, I would have probably written it totally different. Mm. And it's actually gone under a lot of revision. So I actually, okay. uh, what I, what happened was with the book was I wrote it and then I didn't really like it. I <laughs> kind of like deleted my. My, my life's work after like one year or something, I got rid of a lot of the sections and then I read or wrote it again and then I just went over it so many times. So mm -hmm. I, I probably wrote it like, I went over like three or four times like actually writing the book. So uh, if it, I would have, it would have came out last year probably or the year before that if I wasn't going, going through it. And I read it like thousands of times, you know, trying to get it mm -hmm. perfect. And it's good yeah, it's yeah. good to get things pro done properly though like if you say if you weren't happy with that first um initial um piece that you wrote and then you released it and then in five years time you're still talking about something that you dislike <laughs> you know i'm sure that would be worse than having to put all that extra time into something right right and uh, i'm kind of a perfectionist if you okay. if you <laughs> if i can say that mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, I think, uh, after this, um, book that I'm writing, there is going to be another book, uh, after that. So there's always other Can't books. Wait. Same with me. you like, you release one and you're ready on to the next one. Are you ready thinking <laughs> about the next few? <laughs> actually, actually what was funny was, uh, about a year or so ago, I thought, Okay, I have like so many ideas for good books mm -hmm. that I actually started writing other books mm -hmm. in the meantime, in the same time that I was writing this book. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I, I got myself up to here with workload, yep. and then I'm like, I have to like combine Focus. everything into mm -hmm. one. So I kind of what I did was I kind of combined 
all of the books that I had that I like I was writing and the ideas into okay. this one book. Oh, good. But but the next book <clears throat> that I'm going to be writing is more on the idea of fruitarianism. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good. So um, that's my next book. <laughs> mm-hmm. So if you want to find out more about Michael's book and his film that he's working on, make sure you check out his website, We Are Connected. Sorry, We Are Interconnected dot com, and that's also on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. So do, can you tell us, Michael, about your why you're vegan? What what was the what happened? Interesting story, and uh, I always love to explain uh, my journey, and it's been a wonderful journey. It's uh, sometime around spring or summer of 2009, I became vegan. I'm not sure exactly when, but uh, during approximately that time. Um, a few weeks back, before I went vegan, I actually had um, I had shrimp that my mom made. And unfortunately, I was food poisoned from eating the shrimp and I was hospitalized. Mm -hmm. And there were so many questions when I was in the hospital, there were so many questions that were going through my mind, questions that I was just trying to ask myself like for years, Mm. like why are we on this planet, what is my purpose in life, Um, you know, why why are we so destructive as human beings? And I just, I couldn't. I, I, the answer just wouldn't come to me. Mm-hmm. I even asked at one point in my life, I even asked my mother, and she just didn't have any answer. And a few weeks later, after this uh, tra- tragic incident of uh, being uh, in the hospital, I was uh, meditating, and and a voice came to me, like a call out to me. I think it was my subconscious call out to me, and it said, if I profess to love animals and the planet, why am I still consuming animal mm-hmm. products? And at the time, I was I was a pescatarian. I was consuming uh, cheese, eggs, and like like seafood. Mm-hmm. And um, I just asked myself, <clears throat> why am I still consuming these products? And I was a hypocrite. Mm-hmm. And at the first few seconds that this like this voice came to me. I didn't know what was happening. I was kind of scared because I, I, I was like, what was, what's happening to me now? And I, I mean, I didn't want it to happen, but it happened. And I had this awakening. And a few seconds later, it felt like, like, like weight was being lifted off my shoulders. Like I was being lifted to a cloud or something. Like it, was, it felt magical. And I'm, I, I told myself, I just don't want to support any animal cruelty anymore. I just I want to get rid of all animal products. And at that time, I didn't really know what vegan was, mm. but a few weeks later, I, I found out and right, right away, almost, almost right away, I started like promoting the vegan message and I, here I am. I mean, I started, I started promoting it by um, like doing and organizing uh, demonstrations, just holding a sign. That's, mm. I was the only one there. And my mom kind of, I think my mom felt, because I was living with her at the time, she felt, I guess, uh, sorry for me. So she kind of like helped me, <laughs> drove me there and kind of helped me. And Mom's a good the, for that. <laughs> yeah, but on the way she was like, nobody's going to come, nobody's going to show up, you're going to be the only one there, and why are, you, why are you doing this? But she understood, kind of understood like why I was vegan and she mm. didn't oppose it. Yeah. So she was really, in a way, supportive and she is still supportive. And uh, she's more or less, uh, I, I guess, well, the way she says it, I'm 80% vegan. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so eat a yeah, plant-based so, diet sometimes. Yeah, well, mostly at home, she's almost fully like vegan, mm. but it's uh, uh, like she uses like egg replace and all, all that. But when she goes out somewhere, she might have, uh, let's say, a muffin that had that had egg in it or something mm. you know or if she doesn't have her creamer she might use a you know non-vegan creamer for mm-hmm. her coffee so yeah. and at home she might have uh, products that are like maybe test on animals or have animal ingredients like uh, shampoos or something like that mm-hmm. 
And so you, um, with a lot of your vegan educating that you do, what other things do you do? You say you um, organize a couple of like, demonstrations. What else? I have done demonstrations. I have done protests, like a, for a Canadian seal slaughter, for example. I have organized a huge uh, Toronto Vegan Expo for uh, two years, and the third consecutive year, actually, I um, uh, two friends of mine actually organized it, and I was just kind of helping out with them. And I've just been so busy that I've kind of narrowed what I've what I've done on what I'm doing, mm -hmm. and which is the book, the film, and uh, eventually I want to get going. Um, like a world peace diet, uh, intentional community. Mm -hmm. So physically, like an actual, as the, as some people like to call it, commune. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's my hope for the near future. And um, I'm I'm spending a lot of time on. I'm spending like twelve hours a day promoting the vegan message. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's like I sleep, I wake up, and I do what I love to do. Mm -hmm. And even though I don't make a lot of money, I I just love it. Yeah, good. So tell me why Will Tuttle and or his book, The Will World Peace Diet, has inspired you so much? I think uh, for anyone who has not read the book, I think it encompasses virtually everything on this planet as to um, why we are in the mess we are in today, mm -hmm. why we're so spiritually dis disconnected, um, why are like billions of uh, animal, not human animals and uh, and uh, humans? Why are we so causing so much? Like why are we just causing so much devastation and destruction mm -hmm. and killing each other? I mean, why do we have all these wars? And um, each each of us wants uh, wants to achieve peace in this mm -hmm. world. It just doesn't <laughs> doesn't make sense. And and uh, so he talks he talks all about that aspect of what's happening in the world today um, destruction wise and then on the other uh, flip side he talks about how we can actually heal the planet and heal ourselves and help animals and help humans and and really it's not just about that it goes really into the underlying underlying um, uh, issues and uh, how we started hurting animals um, the uh, his, historical, anthropological uh, aspects, and uh, just a whole range of uh, issues. It's, it's just an incredible, and uh, I mean, just, even even listening to the guy. If mm. you if you see uh, some videos on YouTube, I mean, I've seen him uh, live in person like a few times, and uh, but just seeing his videos online or his interviews, uh, he's just a. Uh, all around, just a wonderful, beautiful person, and I think he's like something, somebody like uh, Pythagoras, for example, because Pythagoras was uh, considered to be a strict vegetarian and preaching, mm -hmm. of course, these ideas. So he's something like like that, you know. Okay. He, he was kind of Will Tuttle. He actually was here at the beginning of the year. He did, in Australia. Mm -hmm. He did a um, Australian and New Zealand tour, and I was one of the people helping organise that. So it was very, very well received. He had so many people attend so many of his events, and yeah, people just adore him, don't they? Oh yeah, yeah. You sometimes see because he came to Toronto. Uh, a few times, and sometimes you see the same people coming back because mm. I guess they're just so in love with them. Yeah. <laughs> so, and he is very, very good. Uh, actually, I, I enjoyed his um, his second time. He came here even better mm. because the first time I, I, I found, I guess, I guess it's because every time I see him or every time I hear him speak, it's just better every time, you know, mm. because I, I I learn more. Yeah. And uh, well, he's on. I, I was going to say, I guess, like, you know, the first time is all this information and then maybe the second time you've sort of grasped a bit more and then you can pick some other things out. Yeah, and uh, he's really been my uh, teacher and my guidance and my um, my spiritual master. I mean, he's taught me a lot. I've taken the, uh, I've enrolled and and uh, completed the uh, the. Uh, facilitator training program mm -hmm. through uh, him, and I completed it this year. 
Cool. And so I am actually certified to teach uh, the ideas in the book, Great. which is uh, amazing. But and the course is um, is probably just even better actually because he, he goes actually into the details in each chapter. Mm -hmm. So it's really such a good program, and I recommend everyone uh, you know to take the course. So. Cool. So, um, you were talking before about Canadian seal slaughter. For people yeah. that may not know about that or may not know what happens, could you please just explain a few of the things that go along with it? Uh, i kind of forgotten <laughs> because I haven't been really involved in, in that sector too much. Uh, mm -hmm. Recently, I've been more into the farmed animal kind of uh, situation. Well, when you but, were uh, involved, what was happening? Right, right. Well, um, it's the largest uh, mass slaughter of uh, mammals on the planet. Mm -hmm. um, there's like hundreds of thousands that uh, are slaughtered every year, and a lot of them are actually babies mm. under like a year, uh, sometimes even six months of age. And it's really... Uh, people find this appalling because mm -hmm. uh, general public because they're furry little creatures and a lot of them are babies and we see a lot of this like we see more of the seal slaughter compared to like the footage compared to let's say a slaughterhouse mm, okay. and um, now of course more and more people are seeing it because of of the fact that there's like YouTube and everything mm. out you know. so, so is that, um, does that happen at particular times of the year like is it a seasonal thing? Yeah, it is a seasonal thing, and what I've, from what I've researched, it's not even a livelihood for these um, so-called, I don't know, what do you call them, like trappers or farmers or whatever. It's not really a livelihood because they only make like $1,000, uh, approximately $1,000 for each, um, each season. And so a thousand dollars, you cannot live off a thousand dollars. And so if that's the only job that you have, I mean, you're probably you're living in poverty, you know. Mm. So um, they have other other jobs, and this is just, uh, I guess, I don't know what, why they're continuing to do it, doing it if it's like they're losing money. So I don't know. I mean, the EU has banned, uh, you know, the spelts or whatever they call them. The, the pelts. fur from pelts. these, uh, yeah, pel pelts from the fur, yeah, from the animals. So, it's kind of like why is Canada still, still, you know, committing these atrocities to these defenseless, poor defenseless creatures? You know. Mm, yeah, that's horrible, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, that's what actually, I guess, got me on my pa on the path to veganism. Mm -hmm. Is when I first uh, went pescatarian in two thousand eight. Um, I started like petitions against these sort of uh, uh, barbaric practices against seal slaughter and uh, against wildlife and so forth. And I knew that these things were happening, but I just didn't connect it to my food at the time. But for some reason, uh, health, uh, like consciously health wise, I got rid of uh, flesh from my diet, except mm -hmm. for like. The occasional sea animal, mm. like fair, like shrimp, or and cheese and eggs, mm. and a few years back, because of my um, mucus phlegm problem that I had, uh, my mom told me to get get um, off of uh, milk. Actually, mm. she told me to get off milk, and uh, kind of a funny story was, she told me to um, to try soy milk, so I mm. did, but she bought the unsweetened version mm -hmm. and I kind of gagged because I didn't like the taste mm. but I, I, I find I, I I tried other varieties of like soy and uh, almond and, and rice and so forth and I liked it so I switched it was not a big problem at all and I didn't even really care about milk too much anyways mm. I, I wasn't really a big milk drinker I was a uh, more of a cheese eater mm -hmm. and uh, eggs was a big thing for me, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, when you're saying about the mucus stuff, I remember when I was younger and staying, like, with my auntie or uncle or something, and I was sick, and instead of having, like, um, milk on your cornflakes, they said, oh, because you're sick, you should have orange juice on your cornflakes. So I guess <laughs> so I guess people know maybe somewhat that dairy is not good if you're sick. 
So maybe somehow we need to get that across to more people that maybe it stops you from getting sick originally. <laughs> well, that is uh, probably a good thing, so that people will start feeling worse. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want anyone to feel to get sick or die or whatever. Mm. But I'm, but uh, maybe it will like awaken them if yeah, they I hope so. if they see that they're getting sick or whatever. They need to change something in their mm. in their lifestyle. Definitely. And um, dairy is actually a really big cause uh, for children, um, like illnesses in children, especially um, ear infections. When I had, mm. I had it when I was a child. I had, and plus, I had, when when I was born, I had a really bad ears mm -hmm. uh, problems. So many issues with my ears, mm -hmm. and basically um, from drinking. I think it was because from my what I've done, like research. Um, dairy is really contributing to the ear mm, problems in, in children. Yeah. And so that really uh, made my hearing a decline uh, a mm. lot, okay. especially, especially one of my ears, I think it's my right one, that declined a lot mm -hmm. uh, over the years. And um, there was really nothing the doctors could do for my hearing. It was not really going down, but it wasn't the it wasn't like top. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. and so, um, you know, if people can get off dairy, I mean, that's I mean, all animal products, but dairy especially, mm. um, that will cure a lot of the ear problems. And I had a massive ear. Um, I mean, like pain in my ears when I was a child, mm. and um, I would like scream because it would be so painful wow. that I could not even bear it. Mm. And I still have a tendency, like if I'm flying, for example, descending, uh, um, and, uh, ascending. descending or going yep. uh, or ascending, um, that I have uh, like an issue of my ears mm. uh, as well. So when I was younger, what my mom would do, and I, this was kind of like the ancient kind of cure, is she would put warm vegetable oil in my ear. Mm. Yeah, I've heard I don't of know that. if that would work, mm. but that's mm. what she would do, and. Um, I guess that kind of worsened it, but uh, mm -hmm. since I went vegan and uh, more or less more raw, actually, like uh, fruits and vegetables, that I found that my the buzzing mm -hmm. that you get in the ear from time to time Tinnitus. that actually mm -hmm. yeah that actually has gone down, mm -hmm. so I, I get it less frequently, mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, that's so a good story. <laughs> vegan, vegan, vegan All the lifestyle. Way. Yeah, vegan <laughs> lifestyle, especially raw vegan, like low fat. That's the way. So, t do you want to explain a bit more about that? If you know you're into the the raw sort of diet, um, more so than just plant based diet. So, um, when did you transition from vegan plant based to raw? Um, first of all, just to let everyone know. I am not 100% raw, and I want to be. I want to eat all yeah. fruits, only fruits, because I feel so good on fruits. And some yeah. people say, "Hey, you're gonna get diabetes. You're gonna get this. You're gonna get that. Too much sugar." Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I actually, um, I don't know when I first heard about it, but I heard, uh, I saw actually uh, during a rider on, yeah. and he lives in Australia. Holly, yes. Rider, mm -hmm. Harley, Harley. I saw him somewhere on YouTube, and I was watching some of his videos. And from that point, I then I uh, saw Mike Lawrenstein. Then I saw uh, them talking about like books like Eighty Ten Ten by Dr. Mm -hmm. Douglas Graham. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna you know see and get this book. So I got it. I'm like, this is like this is it. I got to eat more and more and more fruits. Mm -hmm. So I just incorporated more and more and more fruits into my lifestyle. And here I am. I mean, I live uh, very close to Montreal right now in, in Sherbrooke, Quebec. And because of the, you know, my financial situation and and uh, location and so forth, um, I'm not eating the way I, sh I want to because mm. I feel so good just, just health-wise. I feel so good when I'm eating, like, almost entirely fruit, mm. especially, like... Uh, 
like tropical fruits, exotic fruits. Um, okay. And uh, Sherbrooke is kind of hard to find, you know, fruits that you find, let's say, for example, bigger cities like uh, like uh, Toronto, for example, mm. or New New York. Yeah. And um, that is the ideal for, for me personally. Mm. And for what I've uh, researched, like uh, like uh, nutrition wise, mm-hmm. and I find when I when I um, when I eat low fat under ten percent, uh, that is that is for me that is the best. But I'm fortunately I'm still eating some cooked uh, vegan foods. But mm-hmm. uh, you know, as long as no animal has to die for my meal, then I'm happy. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, just yeah. to mention to people, do your own research. Um, before you undertake any dietary sort of change, and right. um, yeah, I I don't agree with the raw diet for a hundred percent. Like I think if you incorporate more raw food in your diet as much as you can, um, there's so many benefits that you can get from that. But yeah, I right. think I think eighty percent. I think that's good. I think that's a good thing to aim towards. So don't be too hard on yourself, there, Michael. <laughs> I think, I think uh, even eating veggie burgers. Or I don't even like to use the word veggie, but vegan burgers mm. and vegan hot dogs. Uh, you know, if somebody wants to go from a standard meat eating diet to that that yeah. junk food vegan diet, go ahead. But as we transition. We need to understand that we need to progress further spiritually and uh, consciously wise and not stay at that level, mm. not stay at the junk food level or yeah, not stay at true. the level of, of um, I, I like to tell people a lot also, is that when you go vegan, your journey doesn't end. You mm, just don't definitely. go vegan and that's it. It's you, the beginning, isn't switch. it? <laughs> yeah, you don't switch just your food and that's yeah. it. Like um, my mom says, oh, I know all about it. I know this. I know that. And she thinks, uh, you know, but well, yeah, there's, what do you do? <laughs> I think if you're always open to learning more things, I think that's that's really good. And you can you can always find out more about this, more about that. If you're into you know activism, you can go down that path. More health stuff, environmentalism, spirituality. Like there's so many different things you can learn about human rights. Um, feminism, you know, so much, <laughs> I think. And, yeah, you're, you're right. When I first became vegan too, um, it was just the beginning. It was just the start. And you just find out all these other things. Like, for me, I went vegan for the animal rights ethics. And then you find out all these other positives and all the other benefits. And I just, yeah, there's not many – I don't think there's any negative really towards it. Yeah. I think it's just a wonderful life. I mean, mm. I've been doing it uh, since 2009. Yeah. And uh, I just find also uh, past, actually past year, I found that, uh, I mean, I, I love everyone and I think everyone is beautiful, but especially the vegans. The vegans are more beautiful because <laughs> I think I think it's just, especially yourself, because <laughs> um, you. I think you are welcome. I think it's because... I think it's because the way of the universe, the way it works, I mean, it just shines a light on us. The universe just shines a light on us, you know, even though I'm not really um, religious, but it shines a light on us. Mm-hmm. And uh, I find, um, I find, like, I, I, you, a lot of times I actually speak to the universe. I communicate with Mother Earth mm-hmm. when I go in nature. And, um, you know, I think that uh, the world works certain ways, you know, for some re- mm. reasons, you know, and we just have to, you know, follow, follow the, the, the way of the world. <laughs> mm. Yeah, the path, yeah. And yes, that's, that's very good. Very wise words there, Michael. And um, I'd like to thank you for taking your time out today to speak to us. And if is, that, you, is that it? Wow. Yes. And if, you, um, <laughs> if you'd um, if you like to stay in contact with Michael, find out what he's doing, um, you can see his website, michaellandfield.com, and um, find out more there. And he's also on various social media channels. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, YouTube. And um, follow his um, book and film adventures on weareinterconnected.com. And thank you, Michael. And if you want to see more videos and more interviews with inspiring vegans, please see vivalavegan.net for more.
Thank you for having me on. No problem. Thank you.